All right, boom, baby, it's showtime. Let's do this. All right, what's up, my brothers? We got a uh, fun episode tonight, the 70th installment of the Unplugged Alpha, Modern Women That Scare Dudes Away. Uh, like, honestly, this should be for the chicks. Watch Small contingent now. Um, like, every once in a while, you guys have seen the uh, gals call in on the show, and they, uh, they have questions about why they're getting poor results. Um, I've had this video clip, it's a seven minute clip kind of sitting on my shelf for a few months now. So I wanted to kind of use this as an example. Um, I've got a fairly interesting Reddit subreddit. I don't know what they're called thing, um, for women, like women's red pill dating strategies. And, um, <laughs> I, I dove in it very quickly on a general show on Friday and I, I just spent the last 45 minutes kind of going through it. And I got to tell you, it's, it's, I can see the alignment between these, these, these columns and these women that are like, but why can't I get a guy? I'm a high value woman and blah, blah, blah. We'll get into it in a bit. We'll sort of break it down for you guys so you can get some scope and frame around it. All right, let's do a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, quick announcement. Um, I'm going to put the email list below because if you're not on my email list, you need to get on it. It's entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags. Um, there's lots of free good stuff that's in the email list that goes out, which isn't on the channel. But I, I'm mentioning this now because I'm reopening the School of Entrepreneurship at the end of the month, uh, just after Christmas. Uh, let me throw it up on the screen, actually present, share screen. So... I mean, look, if you're tired of lining your boss's pockets with gold and having the woke agenda crammed down your throat, as they've been doing lately, um, you want to take a look at the School, Entre School of Entrepreneurship. Um, I've run it now, run it, I've ran it now for the last uh, three quarters. Um, great sequence of courses. Um, if, if you're on the email list, you'll get the landing page and everything. And I'm not going to go through it all, but I mean, you can go through it all and break it down. Uh, what it provides, why you want to take a look at it. Here's the curriculum. I get into the mindset of successful entrepreneurs, taxes, legal matters, insurance, the ideal types of businesses to run, developing a network, government regulations, why borrowing money is a bad idea, human resources, customers, building audiences, marketing, what not to do, pivoting a business, generating business ideas. And then I've got all these extra bonus lessons on anything from Self-published books to Amazon FBA, uh, building your own audience on YouTube like I've done, uh, freelancing, Android, software as a service, crypto blockchain, NFT gaming. These are all longer form sort of podcasts that are anywhere from 40 minutes to like pretty much uh, an hour and change. So if you're not on the email list, get on it. It's below. Um, when I open it for enrollment, it'll be on the 27th of December. It'll close probably six or seven days later. Um, and then you guys will be able to go through material and hop in on the zoom calls and get whatever else you need for me one-on-one -on -one. cause I do monthly zooms. There's also a private Facebook community. Again, get on the email list. You won't know about it when uh, it launches unless you're on the email list. Cause that's where you'll hear about it first. Uh, I, I'm also going to offer a, uh, for the first time ever, I don't know if I'll ever do it again, but a uh, crypto discount on boxing day. So on the 26th of December, if you have uh, Bitcoin or USDC, which why wouldn't you? I mean, I know there's some people out there that don't get it yet, but anyway, um, I will take a uh, substantial discount um, or the the course will be discounted substantially is the way that I should probably phrase it. Um, it's going to launch on the 27th on fiat currency at 1997. If you want to pay in crypto for all that material, you'll get it for 1500 bucks even. So keep an eye open out on my email list for further instructions to do that. You're going to have to get on the list below. That's also pinned in the top comment. So let's get into tonight's show. Um, let me remove this here. And let's start with the qualities that these sort of boss queen girls uh, seem to distinguish a queen, or they also use the word queendom, apparently which is an interesting phrase. Um, we'll see what happens. Let's, let's throw this up on the screen. You guys tell me what you think, because this is a real, this is a bit of work right here, I'll tell you. Okay, here we go. Um, boom, baby. Come on, StreamYard, there we go. 
I don't know if you guys would be able to read it, but let's try to make this font a little bit bigger for you. Anyway, I'll just read it out to you. So this is what it means to be a queen or queendom is what these gals use. Uh, they make reference to the book, uh, Why Men Love Bitches, which I've covered in a press podcast. I think if you search on YouTube, uh, Alpha and Why Men Love Bitches, I've covered that. Um, it's a pretty, I'm not going to get into the details, but it's a stupid read. It doesn't set women straight, you know, for being honest. And then they're talking about being a queen is not negotiable. It's foundational. Queendom comes first, not second. And I don't mean you can pretend to be one. You fake it, you make it, blah, blah, blah. But they've got all these strategies here. So let's see what, the, I mean, I'm not going to read this up. But let's get into why a queen knows her worth. So a queen knows down to her marrow that she is worthy of the best things that life has to offer. Her confidence is unshakable. While she experiences setbacks and makes mistakes just like anyone else, she believes wholeheartedly in her ability not only to bounce back, but to grow from the experience and become even better, even more capable. Sounds noble, doesn't it? Rather noble cause uh, for said queens today. Um, you know, back in the, in the Middle Ages, there was only ever a king and a queen or sometimes just a king or sometimes just a queen or consorts, perhaps. Um, but not everybody could be one. There's there's hierarchies in society, but we're in we're in a period of time now where women are telling each other that um, they can all be queens, right? Uh, the queen is aware of her greatest potential and fulfills it. Okay, also sounds noble. What she's capable of fulfills her deepest potential in all areas of life. She values personal growth for the sake of its own. Come true. She's accomplished in a variety of areas. Now she's starting to sound like a man, right? Areas and saviors her success, never rests in her laurels for too long. She understands her shortcomings and flaws and always looking to improve herself. Sounds noble. Let's keep going. A queen lives a full, vibrant life. Her life is rich with meaning, and she lives it to the fullest, whatever that means for her as an individual. Okay. I like vibrant women. That's cool. A queen suffers no fools. Now it's getting interesting. She does not concern herself with the opinions of those who do not have that have not proven their worthiness to her. She does not give her time to, or energy to anyone who disrespects her or fails to acknowledge her worth. So she's setting her worth, apparently, by their definition. Man doesn't decide what her worth is. Man looks at a woman and says, she's beautiful, she's not beautiful. That's how society works. Man says, she's attractive, she's not attractive. That's how culture works, right? That's how society works. But um, you're not allowed to have an opinion on her worth because she decides that for herself based on the vibrant lectures that we're getting over here but it keeps going but it keeps getting better a queen does not know we've gone through about four of these right now and we have not heard anything about the queen being feminine dressing nicely having nice long hair manicured you know clean you know well shaped hourglass shaped or anything like that they've covered none of that okay uh the queen only couples with an equal she does not consort with peasants or princes, but only other full-fledged kings in their own right. She does not use her power to elevate anyone else to her status. How many times have I said women don't care about your struggles, they wait at the finish line and they pick a winner? You know, it's funny because I've seen about four or five videos in the last six months show from my feed and like clips. There's always some nerd from the Man of Swamp that's like, oh, Rich is wrong about this and here's why. And then like everybody's like, oh, no, Rich is right, you're wrong. <laughs> Anyway, uh, she does not use her power to elevate anyone else to her status. She is not a kingmaker. Again, women kind of expect men to become something, to make something of themselves. So, I mean, there's some truths here for men to pay attention to and listen based on what their opinions are, but I think their opinions of themselves are a little bit skewed. We'll find out why in a minute. Furthermore, she's content to rule alone until a worthy king comes to rule by her side. This is where the little fluffy white doggies and the kitty cats come into play and, you know, the decorative decor throughout the house with, you know, eat, pray, love fucking signage in the kitchen or in the bathroom or so. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like you've seen it. Like this is why you have such a large contingent of women today. And you're going to see a video in a little bit, which I'm going to play for you, where they kind of push themselves into this area where they're, well, I'm single, but I'm, but I'm ruling alone because I read this thing on the internet that said one must rule alone until a worthy king comes to rule by my side as if she's going to get with somebody that's equally the same as her. Women like better. We know that. 
women's hypergamous nature means they date across but mostly up the socioeconomic scale it's not often that they'll settle for somebody that's an equal let's keep going queen never debases herself for another she'll never lower her standards for the benefit of someone else nor will she compromise her beliefs to curry favor with another she has no need to do such things because why she has so many options this is why there's so many single women into their 30s and 40s with cats and dogs I'm telling you guys, there is perhaps a good investment opportunity in uh, pet food. You know, Queen never shies away from the truth, no matter how well she's shying away from the truth that women are beauty objects, isn't she? No matter how difficult, I mean, we want agreeable women, don't we? Gentlemen, in the comments, let the ladies know. No matter how difficult the truth is to swallow, a queen never backs down from taking the true measure of a situation or person. She doesn't delude herself into thinking something is more palatable than it is, and she never lies to herself. If she is confused or unsure, she researches and investigates until a problem becomes clear. This is what queens do. Anyway, so they have this big, long paragraph at the end of it and all these things that women are. Now, I've seen nothing here about she's pleasant, she's agreeable, she has culinary skills, she could be a compliment to a king's life. None of those things. It's give me an equal or else I'm just going to stay single. I want an equal because I deserve it because I know my worth. So let's keep going. Uh, we'll close that one up and we'll go to the next page over here, which are the traits of the very most desirable. And by the way, guys, you can go look this up on the Internet. It's just search for female dating strategy Reddit and be prepared to be disgusted once you go through all the nonsense that they put over here. So the title of this one is the traits of the very most desirable women today. Okay. And there's three main categories here. We've got being an immovable mover. We've got character and we've got listening style. So the lectures that women are receiving from consuming this, uh, very valuable content ladies is you must become an immovable mover. So that's lecture number one. It opens with, okay. So everybody here realizes that the woman should be the one in charge of how things go. Okay, well, we know how well that works when women get with guys that don't lead. We also realize that the woman should not be parenting the man. Okay, so we've got we've got leaders. We've got, you know, the unplugged alphas. We've got the guys that are doing something with their life, putting a dent in the universe. They're, you know, they're competent, strategic, virtuous, captivating, funny. They're famous, you know, the standard blah, 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 right? All on one side over here. But they don't want him to be in charge is what they're telling all these ladies they want them to be in charge this is like the hashtag boss girl the hashtag boss bitch the the queen sort of narrative so woman has to be in charge of how things go but we don't want to parent the guy so if he's too far down the scale he's a nerd he's a loser he doesn't have you know what she's looking for which let's be honest like Women don't match with 80, 85% of guys today when it comes to dating. They just swipe left. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. So they're trying to match with the top 10, 15, 20% of guys. So they're competing for a very small pool of guys. And then they're in this avenue, eliminating any guy that's a leader that wants to lead or would, you know, lead in a conventional or classic way in a relationship because she wants to be the one in charge. So the first piece of advice that they're giving these ladies over here, the ladies, Bill Burr would have a fucking riot with this one, is you must be an immovable mover. You must be a man, basically. You must be a leader. She is the immovable mover. Or that, or that which moves without being moved. Does this have anything to do with her weight, perhaps? She seems trustworthy and reliable because you know she is how she is. And she went trustworthy and reliable. Is that a trait that guys look for in women? Let me think. No, no. Women are beauty objects. <laughs> we like the looks of a we like the looks of a beautiful woman. We don't, we don't think, I mean, you want trust trustworthy and reliable, get a Toyota, right? Anyway, um, the way I understand precisely, but she makes children feel safe while their parents are immovable. Okay. It makes men feel safe in a good way too. Yeah. Because we want women to make us feel, uh, I don't know a single guy that's worth his salt that thinks to himself, I want a woman that makes me feel safe. This is a trait that women look for in men. Like, are you guys starting to see a trend here? They're basically trying to, to, to teach or convert conventionally feminine women into men, right? 
They want they want these women to make men feel safe, really? Cuz if there's a bang in the night, how many chicks do you know that would jump out of bed and go running downstairs to deal with the the broken glass window or or whoever the bad guy is in the house? She nudges him, hides under the covers and says, "Get up and go deal with it." There's absolutely no woman there that does that. So this is just a big fat lie, as most of the rest of this is too. If you can direct things while seeming to stay in yourself, you are calming and safe presence while also seeming adoration worthy. Yeah. After all, the two phrases above are religious. Oh, it's religious. Now we're getting into God. Nobody says, man, God is so boring since he is immovable. Mm. So now they're comparing them. These, these queens are now com comparing themselves to God. Awe-inspiring because humans, yeah, okay. Well, they're, <laughs> they're basically des describing a dude. A virtuous, strong, alpha male dude is what they're describing. So let's go to character. This is the second trait that you must possess beyond being a boss bitch, essentially. Character. She has a character of benevolence even while staying still in who she is. She respects service professionals. That's the first thing that you have to understand, ladies, is respect your servers when you go to a restaurant. She is kind to animals. Because that's the first thing that I think about when I look at a chick. Hmm. <clears throat> she looks kind to animals. I'm not looking at a rack. I'm looking at, I bet she's kind to animals. That's that's exactly what I'm thinking, right? She doesn't make fun of the unfortunate. Well, that's like what chicks do, right? I mean, guys do that. They make fun of the unfortunate sometimes. You know that if she were in a tough situation, she would do the right thing. She probably wouldn't do anything if she was in a tough situation, if we're being honest. She's either going to call her dad or she's going to lean on her boyfriend or her husband. Though she, they're basically saying become a, a man. You don't need no man. If you're in a tough situation, you would do the right thing. You got this girl. Though she prioritizes herself in all normal life situations, you suspect she saved a kid from a burning building. Great. Oh, that's, that's, that's rich. <laughs> how many, how many women run into burning buildings and carry people out? Last time I checked, most firefighters are men. And if there's something heavy to carry out of a building, it's men running in there and doing it, not the gals. Oh, or take a bullet for somebody weak and defenseless. Gee, why, why does this sound a lot like a man, right? The character of a man is ba basically what they're describing here. Anyway, I'm not going to keep boring you with the character area. Listening style. A Becky listens, but a dream girl has gravitas. When a man tells Becky his deepest secrets, she's sympathetic. When he tells a dream girl his deepest secrets, she is silent for a bit and then says, thank you for telling me that, before either saying she needs to think about that more or making a serious observation. She then may offer a hug, but it's not an empathetic hug. Empathy is when you express, I am currently feeling what you feel, but rather a compassionate hug. Oh, man. Taking care. Oh, hang on. Then all the other stuff we know, taking care of your health. Okay, at least I give them that. Taking care of your hygiene, good, so they're not gross, hopefully. All that stuff is great, but not good enough to move someone up from Becky category. That's interesting they use the word Becky to describe that. A desirable woman, a dream girl, according to some other posts I saw, is an immovable mover who always seems to be doing precisely what she wants to be doing, who prioritizes herself in all normal situations, but who, you're sure, has an ironclad enough character to take a bullet if some, yeah. How many women have taken bullets in history? It's only guys that sacrifice them. Men are the disposable sex. Women are the protected sex. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, did all the ladies say, hey, guys, go ahead. You go. We'll just step aside. All you guys get off the boat. We'll just wait in here. because We're the ladies. You know, we take bullets. This is what we know. Women and children first. It's always been that way. It's always going to be that way. They're, they're, they're defining... The, the, the characteristics and traits for the most part of a man. So let's do this. I mean, this is what women read, right? Yeah, this is, this is the advice that they're getting, my friend, right? Um, let's pull this out and I will throw in the video that I want to play for you guys because this really hits home. This, this will hopefully illustrate what I'm talking about. Let's throw these earbuds in so I can hear too with you guys. All right. And I'll be taking questions tonight too, guys. So if you're if you're interested in calling in, let me, actually I'll grab the invite link, uh, copy, and I'll just pin it to the top now while I queue up this video. And and ask a question.
Boom. And I'll pin that to the top of YouTube pin message. Okay. So if you guys have a question tonight to ask, do so on the YouTube chat here. If you guys are watching this somewhere else, by the way, uh, come over to YouTube. Here's the YouTube link. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll make sure I get you guys in for the Q&A segment. Q&A will come up in a minute. So if you're coming in, you'll just be, you know, waiting in order. All right. Uh, okay. So let's share this video here. Um, present, share screen, tab, and boom, audio tab. Okay. All right. So the title of this is, Am I Scaring the Men Away? Um, let's give this some volume here and we'll go fuller screen so you can see our speaker. Hey, Steve. Hey, Michelle. I'm 35, mm -hmm. never been married, no kids, and I'm waiting on my person. Uh -huh. I've never online dated. All right, let me just speed this up a little bit. She's waiting on her person. Okay, so let's see what she's got here. It hinged, tendered, bumbled, mingled, and don't plan to because I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I have high expectations for myself and I will have them for that man that comes alongside me and wants to run this life race. Admittedly, I am quite independent and an alpha female, but not like the ball break. Here we go. She's an alpha female, but then she's about to tell you not like the ball breaking kind. I'm sure she's not. Breaking domineering type. I'm a woman of service. I love people and, and I get spread quite thin and go all kinds of directions in my city. But I now I'm going to pause it here. This is about 44 seconds. I was I was looking for this video in my saved uh, shelf last night when I because I usually create my Unplugged Alpha podcast Sundays um, and then I'll promote it and you know do, do the event that way. So I'm sort of playing this through to, to like okay, what am I going to title this video? My girlfriend's in the kitchen. She's making sushi. Like she's got this new uh, obsession for making fresh sushi. Awesome, love it. I like to eat. She likes mm -hmm. to cook. Perfect. You know what she says while I'm playing this out 44 seconds in? She goes, yeah, but can you make sushi, bitch? This, like, this is what a good woman understands. Take care of a guy. Feed him, right? Compliment his life. He's, he's doing work. He's doing things. So while he's doing that, I'm going to make food for him. This is what you get on the other side of the scale, you know, with the uh, queendom sort of thing. Let's carry on. I just need that man who can literally just be there right alongside me. So, Steve, do you think my independent alpha female mentality comes off too strong? Yes, it's gross. A couple questions. Have you been in long-term relationships? I have. I've been in three, and all, were... all less than about a year and a half, and okay. I call it off actually a wedding as well. And the guys were? Incredible, just not the ones I want to spend my life with, like life responsibility really? issues. You, an alpha woman, extremely independent, but you want a man that's more alpha male than you are, and you want to know if he's out there. Well, yeah, like the faith filled, you know, I need like a Scotty Pippen to my MJ. Like I'm MJ, you know, like Michael Jordan. So if you're not familiar with basketball, and I'm not a big sports fan, I just happen to know this because I've gone through Tim S. Grover's books, uh, Relentless and Winning. And he worked very closely with these athletes. So Michael Jordan was basically the number one athlete, Scotty Pippen. So she's basically saying, I'm Michael Jordan. And I want a sidekick like Scottie Pippen. Now, we're going to get into what she does for a living, but I'm just going to leak it here for you. She's a she, she's a, a teacher. She's a principal for a, a school. Um, and she's she's hoping to land a world-class athlete that's better than her. Let's keep going. And I need that Scottie Pippen that's going to toss that. me the ball. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Like, come along, Scottie. No, 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 anybody, any, any, anybody finish that? Like, a a teammate. No, ain't no man finna do that. You, Michael Jordan, I'm finna, finna be your scout. <laughs> what, what, what? Yeah. What strong, independent, mm. more alpha male you done met that's finna be the Scotty and let you be the Michael Jordan? Well, I mean, I can be the Scotty, the Rodman, but I mean, is the Michael Jordan out there? That's yeah, the yeah, question. they're out there. You think so? But, but let me say this though. Mm -hmm. I don't think the problem is you've had three long-term relationship from three great guys. Most people can't say that. Right. I think it's you. Okay. Okay. So I have, when I say I have high expectations, they're from like here to heaven. 
So I wake up, read devotion, read Bible. I have a master's degree. Yeah. Then I have a small volunteer ran non like strictly volunteer ran nonprofit. Yeah. So I'm quite busy and a principal of a middle school. Okay. So quite busy. Nonprofit, a degree, and a principal of a middle school. You're average at best. Okay. Like any dating app is filled with like hundreds of these within any dating radius of any guy, right? And let's be honest. I mean, she's not a 10. Yeah. So like, I, and I, but I can make time for a man. Oh. I mean, I cook, I will go out, get dolled up. Okay. I can do all that. Okay. But I just need someone that can support me in all the endeavors. So she wants a kickstand. She wants a guy to support her endeavors. She wants an equal that's going to like give up his shit to support her. And like the thing that these, that these women don't understand these, these, these queenies or whatever, you know, they're calling themselves now. There's only one driver's seat in a car and that's handled by the driver. When I'm in a car, I'm the one driving my gal is in the passenger seat. She's happy being there. I'm happy where I'm at. And that works out. But when you have two people pulling on the steering wheel, trying to direct things all the time, this is where sh shit gets complicated. And the problem is, is the only guys that these gals can get are lower quality and they're not that attracted to them over the long-term basis. So like she said, I've been in three long-term relationships. They didn't work out. They lasted a year, year and a half. They were all great guys. You know, it's always the same lyrics. They're just a great guy, just a great guy, but I didn't want to marry him or I didn't want to have his children or whatever. It's because she wants better. But the better guys aren't going to abandon their life strategies, putting a dent in the universe, chasing excellence to help a middle school teacher and be her kickstand. That's not how it works. These, these women don't seem to understand that. But they've been lied to by society and by culture and said, go get your degrees, go set up your nonprofit, go be kind to animals, go blah, 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 all these things. And frame it all in mahogany and put it on the wall and decorate your house and put eat, love, pray everywhere in the house in, in words, and you will find the right guy. And these guys never come along for the most part. If they, if they do end up getting a dude, she has to settle. She has to abandon a lot of her must have lists and gets usually a guy that's for the most part, just maybe on par with her or slightly over. That's what they get. You inadvertently said you want your Scotty to your, which is really what you meant. But you had to fix it after the, the crowd after went. We talked. Ooh, ah. Yeah. So, so you had to adjust it. And you said, "Well, I'll be the rod me," but not really though. You're right. And there's nothing wrong with you having what you have, doing what you do, and wanting what you want. I never ask a woman to dumb it down. Mm. If you have a high expectations of yourself and your life, you should go and do it, and don't stop what you're doing just for a man. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But now you hear that. Preach, Steve. You preach, Steve. You tell us all, man. We can be, we can be and do it all. Mm, mm, mm. I understand this now. What man has to come along and be willing to fit into your system? Mm -hmm. That's hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because see, we got we come with issues. And if we can't be the man, what makes us could you guys imagine if I had a TV show like this with an audience like that? How long would that show last? Maybe like a pilot episode? <laughs> That's that's what the world needs, man. It's some more cold, hard truth. Us, a man. I, it, it's just real simple with me and ladies. You got to stroke that ego. And I, I appreciate you having high standards. Tell me the type of man you're looking for. Just tell me what that is. Who is this right here? This is my incredible mother. She's heard this before. Well, she and, and she wants grandkids. Yeah. Oh, and look, the incredible mother doesn't have a man beside her. Shocking. Like yesterday? Y yesterday. But I keep telling her to ask my brother. So, um, <laughs> let's get, let's get back to those qualities. Yeah. By the way, guys, before you wife up a chick, take a look at her mom. Okay. If you want to see what you're going to be getting later on down the road. Um, so I like what you said, everything that I. No, tell am... me. No, 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 no. No, I want to hear what you want. <laughs> I want you to tell me what okay. you want in a man. All right. Faith filled. God first. Okay. Smart and witty. Hang on. Let me write all this shit down. Let's get her list down for the ladies. All right. All right, let's go. God-fearing man. So can hold a good conversation. Okay. Adventurous. Oh, hang on. He's got to be witty too. Adventurous. 
because she doesn't like boring. Because you can do anything to a woman you want except for bore her, right? Likes to travel. Mm -hmm. Oh, she like. Oh, shocking! She likes to travel. Another woman that likes to travel. But does she travel on her own dime, or does she travel on his dime, dime like the rest of them, for the most part? Family first. Family first. Okay. Is secure with himself. Doesn't have to have a lot of money. Just secure and willing to support their teammate. Teammates. 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 Oh, my God. Teammates, can you imagine being her teammate? You don't need a lot of money, but I guarantee you she won't pick you, fellas, if you don't have at least what she's got. I don't know what a middle school teacher makes in California. I'm assuming this is where they film it, maybe 80, 100 grand. Oh, sorry, principal, maybe 80, 100 grand, something like that. So you'd have to make at least that to get with her. So you got to be God fearing, witty, adventurous. And, you know, the funny part that I always find about these God fearing women. Now, she's had three other boyfriends for a year and a half each, so she's been with at least three other guys. We know it's a lot more than that. So how can you demand a God-fearing man if you're not even subscribed to your religious beliefs to begin with and showing up as a virgin? That's truly what I've... Have I missed anything, Mom? Yeah. Oh, about 20 things. Mm. Yeah, you've missed. I don't. I, don't, I still I, haven't heard the mm. type of man you want. Oh, you want like a like the even the physical characteristics. No, I want the type of man you want. A male type is you want a man who is this way, this way, does this, feels this, thinks that. That's a type. Mm. Maybe we're having trouble with finding it because you don't know exactly what it is. Mm. That's, heard, received. And, and let me tell you something. And you all that in a bag of chips. You everything. You got Salsa, great personality. Queso. Salsa and he's just and he's just finished lying to this chick saying you're all that in a bag of chips and then she adds on top of it salsa queso quesadilla man oh yeah i got it all down in this she thinks she's all that in a bag of doritos guacamole but you are not though i know <laughs> you are you a lie i just found that i just talking to you you're just a lot and you and you lot but you done had three men that are locked in on that lot but then what you kept wanting from them, they didn't live up to it. And I wanted to live out my dream too. So not, and you want to live out your dream. And I did. So and, now I'm 35. And, but see, you can't drag Single. everybody with you on your dream that don't want to go. <laughs> so if, if I want to help you lady, because you seem like you really want this answer. If I just knew what you wanted, if you knew what you wanted, you feel me? Yeah, I do. I'm crying because I'm, I got it connected. I get it. See, you're a sweet person. So here, let me tell Here you what you go. got going for you. I think your personality is top flight. You oh, seem yeah. like a fun person. Nope. You seem sweet. You're not nasty or evil. You got mm -hmm. a beautiful personality. You're pretty. You're a nice looking lady. You take care of yourself. And you seem to be so far to have made yourself happy. Now. And yet she's standing there crying. All we need is for you to be willing to do for someone else the same thing that you expect them for do to do for you. Instead of trying to find the person that fits this, you got to find out where you fit to. I think if you do that, that's it. Thanks, Steve. There you go. Problem solved. All her woes are over. Well done, Steve. Good job. We've got that problem solved. So you see, guys, this is you know, this is like, you know, this is what you're going to get, right? This is why, ladies, if you're watching this, this is probably why you're struggling to deal with guys. We don't give a shit about your degree. We don't care about your pet collection. We don't give a fuck about your decor in your house and your eat, pray, love words that you stick in random places. We don't care about any of that stuff. Are you feminine? Are you agreeable? Can you be a... Now, if you're talking about finding the kind of guy that she's describing... The handsome, virtuous, tall, successful, competent, captivating guy, like all of those traits that women typically go for. That's what you got to be as a lady, right? Women don't share the pot of gold with guys. We know that. We know that. Okay. You if you're a guy and you're dating a gal in her 30s like this, and you make around the same amount of money or maybe a little bit less, first thing she's gonna do is say, I want a prenup. Women don't share their pot of gold with a guy. Just how it is. Get used to it. Okay. Ladies, stop, stop buying into all that nonsense about, you know, be a boss girl and I need my Scotty to my MJ. You know what I'm saying, Steve? 
Yeah, Jaron pointed it out, right? Nowhere in that conversation did they discuss what she can offer the man that she's looking for. What What is it that you bring to the table, ladies? What is it you bring to the table? Because guys want a woman. They want to come home to a pleasant, like a pleasant evening. They don't want to come home to listen to them bitch about the part timer and how she puts fucking diapers on her dogs and wouldn't shut up about it all day long. They don't want to listen to any of that stuff about happens and, you know, with the school, the kid and this and that and that and and all that sort of thing. They don't. They got their own fires they're putting out and they're probably bigger than yours. That's just the way that it is, you know? It's okay to be feminine. It's okay to be a gal. It's okay to compliment his life and enter his frame and, you know, do useful things for him right? It's okay to do all those things. Anyway, let's do the Q&A segment. Um, I've dropped the link for you guys to call in. And uh, that's pinned at the top of the YouTubes. Uh, It's open Q&A, so you can bring anything. It's open to young, old, men, women, whatever you got, guys, whatever you got, bring it. Uh, Before we do that, I'm just going to run the ad reel and uh, we'll do some Q&A. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right. Um, Okay, let's do Josh because he wants to talk about some wife school. So, Josh, what do you got for me, buddy, with wife school? Have you heard of Just Pearly Things? Have I heard of... Yeah, Pearl uh, Pearl had me on for an interview like three, four years ago when she was a nobody, so I know who she is, yeah. I was just curious what you make of this wife school thing that she's doing. Do you think it's all... And what advice do you have for her that she could take on board? Well, I mean, <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want me to start with, man? So tell me about the wife school. So, so I'm assuming she's going to be lecturing women on how to be wives. Yeah, they've also got like, what's his name? Troy Francis. Mm. I don't know too much about it. I know that I've only like seen a little bit of it. It's like an hour long. Well, look, I mean, the first rule of wife school should be be a virgin. Yep. And that's how what, many that's what how Muslims ma- are gonna be preaching. Well, like, I mean, like, is she a virgin? I don't think so. I mean, she's got no, a she fairly said, large notch count from what she's I understand. Already said, she already said that as well. Yeah. She's honest so, about that. So why is she in a position to lecture, you know, the gals about wife school then? Your guess is just as good as mine, Rich. Legitimate question, right? See, there's this new, there's this new era of um, tradcons. Well, they're not tradcons. Like, like they're always wall, post wall women. I don't know how old Pearl is. She looks like she's in her late twenties, maybe early thirties, or something like that. But she's like twenty six. Well, she looks old. <laughs> she does. And then there's um, Ali, who looks. But, she's twenty seven, but looks younger than her, which is yeah. Funny. So, so all of these gals have now entered the mano swamp because because they see that there's guys. That are, that are struggling with women and they also know that they've throughout their entire lives had the attention of guys 
unanimously freely you know thrown at them so when they start talking about the sorts of notions and ideas that i've talked about for years or even other guys that are in the space have um you know dispensed they just basically say the same thing without any real frame around it and because they've got their hair and makeup done then you get these geeks that watch this stuff and they consume it you know ravenously and it's like oh look you know another video from so and so and she's going to talk about this and why you know women have to be this way if they want to get ga guys and like none of these girls want to bang the guys that are watching them is you know is the truth of the matter all you're doing is you're feeding and stroking their ego with more of their nonsense they're not saying anything innovative and truthfully at the end of the day they don't even understand the male struggle nope. nobody understands the male struggle except, except for a man us. yeah, yeah. Only a guy that's like been rejected, only a guy that's chased a girl that, you know, shot him down mm -hmm. knows the struggle of a man. None of I these think women. Her, the only advice um, for dating um, men towards women could be from her father or her brothers. Like, you've got a daughter. You could have to have this conversation with her one day. How is she? How old is she now? You don't mind these, 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 these gals need to step aside and let the guys handle it. You know, yep. is really what it boils down to. They're not yeah. they're not offering anything useful to men. If anything, it's just a distraction from mm. the reality of things. Guys, chase excellent, put a dent in the universe, yep. become competent, become something useful to yourselves, develop a strong masculine flame, yep. know how to fight, 1.62 exactly. golden ratio. Can you make money? Do you know how to make it rain? Right? Because money solves a lot of problems. All these chicks are, are doing is just sitting there saying things that we've said years ago. And then they're getting yep. attention for it because they say it with a bra and makeup on and lipstick, right? Yep. That's a very true. So no, I'm not a huge fan of it. Let them carry on. You know, it's it's better than them doing uh, shopping hauls, you know, I suppose. Or OnlyFans. Or OnlyFans. But, you know, let's be honest. I mean, look, unless you're a virgin, okay, and you're you're a competent woman that's gonna that, that has a capacity to enter the frame of a guy and, and support his life and his mission, I don't. I don't really care what you have to say about wife school. Mm. Stop stop women from being so promiscuous. Then we can have a conversation about your wife school. Let's start there. But they'll never do that because women have been told their entire lives, do whatever you want. You can be like a man. Go chase excellence. Bang as many dudes as you want. There's no consequences. It's disgusting. Not to mention it, like the risk of STDs. It's, it's only when they come to the realization themselves when they get older into their later 20s or in their 30s, they're like, oh, shit. They're like, oh, stupid. fuck. And these guys over here are saying the right things. So I'm going to go say the right things too. And I'm going to copy them. That's how it goes. Yep. Anyway, Josh, you get the idea, right? Yeah. Thanks, brother. All right. Wife school. Well, that's a new marketing pitch. How do you, how do you turn a promiscuous woman? into wife material you cannot make a hoe a housewife get these gals before they go and ruin themselves okay wife school give me a break have you guys seen the stats on female promiscuity i i mean i'd have to dig it up i covered it in my book in one of the chapters um i think it's something like after two sexual partners a woman's basically a bad choice for mother stock for marriage type of material especially in hostile western conditions your chances of divorce go up dramatically from virgin to two as unbelievable as that sounds statistics prove that's the way things go so if you want wife school or girl stock for something like that find a virgin do they exist maybe a few but she ain't turning back the clock on any of these hoes that have been running around all their lives Just another marketing pitch. <clears throat> um, I think Mo was waiting around for a bit. Let me grab Mo here and see what he's got for me. Hey, buddy. Hey, Rich, can you hear me? Yeah, what do you got for me tonight? Hey, uh, before I get to my question, do you can I give you a quick shout, shout out? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, I don't know if you remember me. I've been following you since 2016 okay. when you had the black M3. Uh, and, you know, I got your book. Uh, I read it. It's pretty good. Uh, and you know, I've been focusing on just excellence. Uh, this year, I got a job with Amazon. My uh, goal was to work for one of the fan companies like Facebook, Apple, Google. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I got that, and uh, the first time I, you know, started making over 200k. Next up is quarter million, and you know, going up. Uh, and today, my question is nothing to do with the ladies. Okay. Um, and uh, so, what I wanted to ask you is, um, I'm trying to uh, uh, diversify my portfolio 
I've been mainly doing a lot of cryptos and stocks, but mm -hmm. that's kind of taking a tank. And uh, then I was thinking maybe I want to invest in real estate, uh, but um, like, you know, the uh, interest rate about 7%. And I live in Austin, Texas. That's important because in Texas, there's no state income tax. So mm. property taxes are quite higher. Uh, so I do have a bit of a cash. And with the current inflation, I don't want to just sit on cash because, you know, every day my uh, month, the, the quickest way to go, go broke is living money in the uh, bank mm. account, right? Okay. So I'm trying yeah. to av avoid that. So so what you want of, to deploy it yeah yeah that's what i'm trying to get i would to. wait i would wait watch watch the video i did with george gammon a couple of weeks ago um mm -hmm. he makes a very compelling argument about the markets tanking further um he's been around on mark moss's channel he's talked about it on his youtube channel as well extensively in the last couple of weeks as well and it's it seems pretty obvious to me that having dry powder right now is probably the best thing to do cash is king that's like who like who cares if inflation erodes it away a little bit for a few more months but if but if the markets do tank which it seems like the probability that happened is exceptionally high you're mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of stuff on sale you know there's a good chance crypto could go down like you know there's a good chance bitcoin you know could hit 10 12000 I don't know if you heard that uh, SBF the Sam he just got oh, yeah. arrested yeah 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 so i mean there's still there's still a few more things that have to unravel, it seems. So sitting on dry powder is not a bad thing. I mean, if you want to deploy it, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really have anything that I like right now, man. I wouldn't be buying any real estate. I wouldn't be buying any stocks right now. The stock market's definitely going to correct more than the crypto market. It seems like Bitcoin's been pretty resilient, especially with all the negative news. Mm -hmm. right with the SBF thing and the yeah, Celsius yeah. and a hold and not and all this sort of stuff. So it's been reasonably resilient, but I still wouldn't go out and make any big buys right now in any asset classes. So that's just what I'm doing. Cool. And uh, I do have one more question. Uh, yeah, yeah being, a, being a car guy, I have to ask you this. I know you have had the 720s for a little, little bit. Um, I'm wondering what's your next purchase? And uh, you're the type of a guy I know, like you would probably buy a car that's would probably like not depreciate in value. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. also something I want to like kind of, you know, get your. Um... Well, if you want a car that doesn't depreciate in value, you have to get a low production, high demand car. So Porsche GT3s, uh, LT McLaren. But they're so hard to get. I they're mean, hard to get though. If you go to a dealership, they will not give it to you. They're very hard to get. And, you know, to be honest with you, the fucking prices are ridiculous. Like a buddy of mine Mark has a buddy of mine has a 765 LT for sale right now. He paid like five for it. It's listed for 800,000 USD. Like he paid 500 Canadian. It's listed for 800,000. So um, as far as the next car, like there's nothing out there that is going to be faster and more comfortable, have better aero, have more storage than what I have right now. So until maybe a 720 replacement comes along, I, I think I'll probably keep the 720. Sounds good. Cool. Because for right, me, it's uh, about rallies, right? Like, I like doing, like, long yeah. road trips and putting shit in the car and ripping it up with friends. And we have all these, like, anti-fuzz uh, busters, you know, sort of set up to deal with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the police patrols and stuff like that. So that's my thing. Do you still have the S5 or do you, do you, are you daily? or you know? Yeah, yeah, the S5 is a daily. So most of the videos you see me making in my car are usually in the S5, yeah. Gotcha, cool. Yeah. All right, um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I it's just crazy to see like in 2016, I think May, you had like maybe 3,000 subscribers. I've been seeing and watching you since. Oh, and, yes, you know, so. you have, yeah. It's it been so what, 600,000 600, now or close to it. But yeah, appreciate hey, everything you were doing. I appreciate you. Thanks for being around for so long. Thank you, sir. Appreciate All it. All right, buddy. Take care. Uh, M or AMG? For me personally, I'm still an M guy. I've had a few M cars. I've had two M3s and an M5. Um. I just like them better. The problem that I have with, with BMW today is their design language is kind of ugly, if I'm being honest. I don't really like the look of most of their new cars. So um, that's why I haven't touched the new M car. I mean, an M5 lo looks nice. It does, really. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just not stoked about most of the uh, BMWs today. Um, all right, let's see what else we got here. So let's give it to uh, Michael. Let's see what he's got for us. What's up, buddy? You're muted there. Just hit the mic thing. There you go. Hey, Rich, how are you? Good, man. What's up? No, nothing much. Um, I don't really have a girl question. I have all my that stuff figured out. Okay. Um, 
what's your biggest advice for somebody that's young in business and trying to like um, network and try to get respect from people that have already made it in life? What kind of business do you run? Uh, I'm not in a business currently, but I do a uh, CPA, like accounting stuff for like local firms and um, businesses and stuff like that. And then it handles anywhere from between 10 million bucks to a few hundred thousand dollars. Like I just closed a $200,000 deal a few days ago. And um, yeah, just my main problem right now is I'm so young in the business and getting that credibility from other people is kind of hard to get to right now. Uh, accounting. Let me see. So I've had shit accounts that I've had great accounts. The best ones are always out there looking to solve problems for their customers. Um, mm -hmm. How to lower their tax rate, how to make their money go farther, how to write off more shit. Doing workshops on that is probably not a bad idea. Networking with lawyers is probably not a bad idea. Anybody that deals with entrepreneurs, right? Okay. On, a, on a regular basis, get to know them, do lunches, golfing, you know, if that's your thing. Um, webinars, workshops on those topics, and then like offer more, you know, beyond that. It's probably the best way to network. Um, and you have to genuinely, genuinely like people. Like you're going to have to genuinely want to form a personal relationship with them. So be interested in what they're interested in. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. All right, Mike. Uh, hit that advice. Thanks. Thanks, man. Um, all right, let's hit uh, Craig over here, see what he's got for us. Hey, Rich, it's uh, good to talk to you. Um, I've been following you for quite a while. I've been studying the, the red pill for about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've seen some of your early stuff. And um, I had uh, kind of a, a epiphany, uh, an original thought about six or seven years ago. And nobody has ever talked about this in the entire manosphere. And I wanted to, to bring okay. it to your attention. What's that? Um, well, I think that we can harness the, the power of the teenage male sex drive to force dramatic reductions in, in uh, teenage alcohol and drug abuse. So I think we can, the, the, the hypergamy and, and, uh, and the red pill can be explained to teenagers and motivate them to uh, try to, to strengthen themselves um, like a, like an arms race where everybody's com competing against isn't, each other. Isn't Andrew Tate already doing that with the kids running around saying, what color is your Bugatti? I've never heard that. No, I've followed Tate quite a bit recently, and I don't think he he uh, his his largest demographic is 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 probably like teenage boys. It seems like mine's okay. a lot or, older. Like my average guy is probably in their thirties. But well, yeah. But the, a lot of the, the thing is, kids that he's talking to are like, okay, well, Top G looks cool. You know, he drives nice shit, has hot gals, uh -huh. is in good shape, was a world class uh -huh. fighter. So he's yeah. kind of leading by example, you know what I mean? Like he's not one of these guys. Not, like not in the in the drug abuse, or the alcohol uh, realms. So. Well, <laughs> I've, I've, perfect. The only, <laughs> I, I know, I know. The only reservations I have whenever I see Andrew Tate videos is that it looks like I'm I'm watching the dissolution of Andrew Tate. Like he's got a, a lot of money, but he's he's like drinking himself and and smoking cigars and and kind of slowly killing himself that way. So I so, kind of don't buy it. 100 percent. so okay so is this like a let's solve the world's problem sort of you know appearance or is this like a question that you have well no no i've written a book uh it's available at strongerteens.com um okay and... this isn't a place where you pitch your stuff either craig okay that's fine but uh this is something that that you know that doesn't get talked about in in the manosphere that if you explain that women only well i mean if you explain a lot that that women only expect uh, they respect strength right and the, mm -hmm. and they will only have sex with men that they respect but at the at the on the flip side of that if you're trying to strengthen yourself if you turn that around you'll be less likely to weaken yourself with alcohol and drug abuse so if you can explain that to millions of, of teenage males then what you'll do is you will force dramatic reductions in teenage alcohol and drug abuse were you at, that could uh... be were you previously a, a alcoholic or a drug abuser? Uh, in my early years, yes. It was about okay. 25 or 30 years ago. Okay. And then you just went cold turkey, you stopped? Yes, yes. Hardcore stuff or just booze? No, no, it was just, it was alcohol mostly. So. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, I know a couple of guys that are alcoholics that, you know, quit, obviously. They still call themselves alcoholics. They don't, uh, they don't have a current relationship with vices but they had one in the past and they talk about it a lot you know just the way that you do um yeah. like i would argue that okay like maybe drugs and alcohol are 
a bit of a problem when it comes to young men today. But I think a bigger problem is video games, porn, obesity, uh, lack of drive. Like I, I to me, that's a bigger problem to solve than just you know don't don't have beer. Well, like I drank beers and I did a lot of drugs when I was younger too. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that you have to get. It's, it's kind of like leading a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. If you mm -hmm. give young men the insight that they need, which is what they talk about the man's fair all the time, what women want, right? They will try to make themselves as attractive to possible uh, as possible to women. So, uh, they will take up, you know, weight training and, and physical and personal development and also uh, try to strengthen their, their themselves mentally all the time also. So you, you will give them that motivation. So, and this is kind of a, this is, this is like an ideological trump card that can be used to counter any kind of feminist or, or woke ideology that they're trying to get into schools, mm -hmm. right? If, if they want to talk about gender pronouns yeah, but Craig, or whatever... When... You look like you're about close to my age, right? Like, how old are you? I'm 55. Okay, so I mean, like, you sat through a lot of, uh, you know, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, like advertisement sure. with, like, the fried egg and all that sort of stuff? Yes. Yeah, like, we saw all the same sort of, you know, don't do drug stuff when we were kids then. Well, this this would be able to, like, f give concrete results. It would force dramatic reductions. It would not be like a, an advertising campaign. But what color is your Bugatti? I don't have <laughs> Is a Bugatti, like, a $5 million car? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have so, it. So, so I mean, like my, I mean, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm posing it like Craig is I like, get your passion for it. Like I get that it's important not to be a druggie. I get that it's important not to be an alcoholic. It's not the most productive use of your time. But I think that the stuff that I've spoken about, mm -hmm. the stuff in my book alone is factually more useful than anything else out there that's ever been printed in the manosphere. Well, I mean, I've read your book. It's all right. It's just all right. It's I, I like some stuff about it. There's other stuff that I didn't care about. But mm -hmm. what what I'm trying to say though is that is that this if if somebody is trying to to uh, if somebody's trying to force your children in school right to adopt gender pronouns or or something some that they do have a lot of protests about this. this that's nothing to do with drugs or alcohol. That's just being a no, man and saying no. I'm but, not going to adopt that. I know that. What I'm saying is. This is an ideological trump card you could use. You could say, well, instead of that, I want to protect my son from becoming addicted to alcohol and drugs. So I'm going to encourage them to strengthen themselves uh, instead and then and not do that. So that's what this is about. What this plan I'm talking about is. Okay. Well, so, thanks for popping in, Greg. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Yeah. Guys, don't come into my show pitching your, your stuff. Bring questions or share experiences that are valuable, please. Michael, uh, let's see who we got here. Alberto, Josh. I got to go to the private chat. Okay, I think it's Alberto that's up next. Let's give Alberto a shot. Alberto, what's up, buddy? Hey, Rich, can you hear me? Yeah, what's going on? Awesome. Uh, not much. Thank you for doing this. I uh, really looking forward to asking. I've been having these problems since high school where women, for some reason, think that I'm gay. Um, I had several experiences where, you know, I was going out with this chick and then when I made a move, she freaking jumped out and she says like, I thought you were gay. Oh, and, did you get in the uh, friend zone with her? No, not at all. I just, stopped uh, stopped talking to her. How many, um, how many, I don't dates, like, uh, how many, how many official dates did you go on before you made a move on her? Ah, uh, probably three. Uh, I mean, I slept. I slept with her same room, same bed. She told me in the morning that I had a, you know, hard wood, and I told her it was normal for guys to wake up like that. But uh, mm. it was more of a, a friends of my mom. I was in. I was sixteen. I was just stay over until I decided to make a move. I wasn't really interested until until she started telling me that she wa always wanted to have a mm -hmm. somebody like me. I guess that that I thought she liked me. That's why I made a move. But I usually like? don't chase. I usually don't chase girls. I mm. I don't like to waste my time too much. Where do you live? I have more. I live in Arizona. And you're Latin. You're from Mexico, or? Yes, I was born in Mexico. I came over to the states when okay. I was in middle school. Do you want to throw your camera on so we can get a look at you, bud? Or there you go. Okay, well you're a good-looking guy, right? Yeah. 
it's maybe something to do with your voice and your tonality because i mean like just listening to your voice when we're when we're chatting i mean it sounds a little uh finocchio is what the italians would call it hmm write that down <laughs> All right. Do you think that might be because of a low uh, testosterone levels? Do you have low T levels? I never checked my uh, T levels. You got a decent beard. I mean, like most of the time when guys have facial hair, if they have low T, it's very patchy, right? Like it doesn't fill in. I can see that you're, you know, you got a decent beard. I mean, like, look, you can deepen your voice, you know, doing voice exercises. You can increase your testosterone levels marginally by taking certain supplements. Like in my supplement line, if you go to theunpluggedalpha.com and then sort, sort by testosterone support, zinc, vitamin D, K, and the T support, those three alone will probably boost your testosterone a couple hundred points. Um, you're going to need to lift weights and rest though, right? Like that's the other key thing as well. But usually women will see a guy as gay if i mean if you're straight and if they see you as gay or they say oh i thought that you were gay it's usually because your mannerisms and behavior and your dress and your style and the way that you approach them is more like friend zony right whereas you know yes. like a straight guy will make his intention very clear right away right Yes, exactly. I, I like really, you sit down at her house really and she's like, hey, Alberto, you know, can I get you a drink? And she's going to the kitchen. You look at it and you go, actually, I like to wear that ass as a hat. Oh, sorry. Did I just say that? That's what an alpha male will, <laughs> will say, right? To express his intentions and, you know, say what he's thinking. But if you play the friend zone guy for like two, three dates and then you make a move, but you're like slow with it, but you're still very nice and buoyant and stuff like that, she might put you in like that. Hey, this guy could be in the gay zone sort of thing, right? Yeah, and I'm more concerned with uh, like moment encounters. I was just in a festival, and some girls just assumed like after three minutes that I was gay. Um, so I think it, um, the voice. I have to really pay attention to my voice. Um, mm -hmm. Looking, uh, do some uh, testosterone levels checks, and yeah, I got some homework to do. Do, like do a bit of a makeover when it comes to your look as well i don't know if you want to mess around with the hair and the facial hair and the style and all that but i mean if you can but if you can get yourself into like a more masculine frame sort of thing you probably have less pushback from the gals this is kind of difficult for me right because i'm not a chick um i know what mm -hmm. women are attracted to right and I mean, it should be obvious to them whether you're gay or straight. Like most women, they seem to know like right away. It's almost like women have gaydar like gay guys have where they know if somebody's gay or straight. Mm -hmm. So you're sending off some vibes that they're picking up on that they're going, hang on a sec. This guy looks like he could be gay, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just saw my hair too. I just started growing it. I, I like to experiment. I like to have adventures and, uh, so uh, I'm pretty has, open-minded, has, but not, not in that way. Has anybody way. ever said to you, Alberto, you look like so-and-so? Yeah, 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 definitely. I like rock Ooh. and roll, and uh, usually it's somebody um, from that area. Is there an artist or somebody that they say that you look like? Definitely. Yeah, I got Ooh. many. Yeah. You, uh, also, I get a lot. Um, from Mexico, I get, they, tell me, they ask me if I'm from uh, uh, Arabia. Like Qatar in those places? No, I can tell by your accent that you're Latin, but yeah, you do look kind of like maybe you're from the Middle East too. So the reason why I'm asking is, mm -hmm. is because like women have said to me throughout the years, like Rich, you know, you look like The Rock, you look like Vin Diesel, you look like Triple H, uh, the WWE guy, you look like, um, there's a few guys that I've passed off that are like, you know, conventionally masculine sort of dudes, right? Yeah. So, you know, we always say, you want to have a look and you kind of want to own it sort of thing. So whenever somebody's like, oh, Richard Bald, it's like, yeah, that's part of the look, stupid. Don't you think I shaved my head to have that look, right? So, okay. I mean, if you can find a strong masculine figure that's prominent in Hollywood or in, you know, certain mm -hmm. circles that the gals run in that you like and then sort of mimic that look, then that'll give you a little okay. bit of an advantage because it'll be like, oh, Alberto looks like whatever, you know. Yeah, I get I get told that a lot. Thank you for the advice. I, I have one ask. Go ahead. Um, I find I think that I'm not too 
I don't I don't chase girls a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's my time. I'm I'm waiting. I'm really working on myself and uh, being successful. Mm-hmm. And I see it as a waste of time sometimes. And I'm not sure if that has something to do with the way that I my well, you have um, to that be I behave. direct in your intentions, right? Like you have to express interest in them rather than sort of lollygagging around and thinking, well, if I spend two or three nights with her, she'll hopefully want to bang me, right? Uh, Alan Roger Curry mm-hmm. died recently. He wrote a great book called Mode One, and he talks about direct communication methods when it comes to dealing with women. You might want to check it out because it'll help you sort of like calibrate yourself to a more direct conversation piece with these gals. Okay. All right, will do. Okay, man. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for the advice. All right, Perfect. buddy. You take it. care. Uh, all right, who we got? Let's do Rodrigo. Hey, Rich. Can you hear me? What's happening? Hey, man. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. Um, for I read your book, been following you, and kind of relate to your story, too. was divorced at 38. 30- 38 year old then got involved with uh, not a single money but a pet mom and <laughs> kind of <laughs> they're almost as bad post- aren't they oh man you posted a video about that and yeah i relate to everything you posted and i uh, went on a down slope and found you on the internet and man it it, it it you were sharp you you were on time with everything i don't i don't agree with all but 99 percent um I agree. But just to save your time, uh, mm-hmm. it's been a while I've been trying to, to connect and talk about uh, some issue regarding abortion. Um, mm-hmm. It was a time ago that was elections here in the U.S. And I changed my mind a little bit on how I approached it and my opinion. I was I'm always like um, a libertarian. I like people having their options and freedom to choose. But after rethinking this, pro-choice is mostly pro-choice for women. Mm-hmm. Men don't have any option at all. Mm-hmm. If they have the option to choose, it's their body. But if it's your children, you just have to pay for it after all. Um, you have no option to decide if they should have it or not. At the end, if you have the means to provide, they will opt to have the children. But you have no option to decide. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. Like, is there a question in this, though? Uh, no, no, uh, no questions at all. Just I would like to to tell people that mostly men, when they vote, to consider that. Uh, because at the end, if they are voting for pro-choice, they have no pro-choice. So just to reconsider their options and think that uh, they have to think more on on their side like you said um you have to think about what is right for you and not right for them okay thanks buddy thank you so there's an illusion of choice when it comes to voting guys um having more guys vote in a certain direction isn't going to repair anything in society culture has moved decades into women voting and the problem is is that let's be honest women vote for more liberalism generally speaking now now as men have gotten softer and weaker and less competent and fatter and lazier and are just droids out there sort of thing they start to vote the same way too like soft men vote for liberalism so I don't see the tide changing anytime soon. We've had a liberal, so-called liberal, I mean, more of a socialist prime minister here in Canada for several elections now. He's probably probably gonna get the next election too. I think it's in 2024 or something like that. I don't see the tide changing in the US very much. Um, These guys are conniving. I mean, you saw what they did with the uh, Twitter report, right? there was a lot of manipulation that happened during the last election. So even if you set that aside, that's that's just a pattern that people vote for. People don't want freedom. They don't want freedom of choice. They don't want low tax rates. Uh, they don't want men at the head of the household. They want bigger government. They want free shit. They want 
more wokeness, more inclusivity. Um, the way that you solve all of that is not by, I don't know, voting on abortion agendas or not drinking or whatever. The way that you solve all of that is to get your own fucking house in order, man. Like get your, get your, get your life in order, fix your own house first, draw a perimeter around you and those that you love and take care of that thing. Right. Cause you're not going to change the world outside of that. Right. You know, there's always guys that come on and are like, oh, I want to talk about, I had a guy on a couple weeks ago and he's like, oh, we have a way to uh, opt out of the family court systems and just not recognize it. I'm like, cool. So send me the fucking legal papers and, you know, show me where you've resolved this. And uh, he sent me some gibberish shit. And I said, no, send me the actual Canley court record showing that you've actually won using your arguments. Never came through. Guy was full of shit. Got an email from a lawyer about a week later saying, guy is absolutely full of shit. Don't ever follow those instructions because you will get in trouble. You get a guy who came on earlier, right? Obese. And he's saying, we got to get kids to stop drinking. No, dude, we got to stop you from eating hamburgers first too. Like there's there's bigger problems out there, honestly. It's, it's, it's fix everything around us is the angle that a lot of guys take today is we have to fix that over there. And there's that angle over there. But people aren't fixing their own homes first. Fix your own house first before you try to fix the world. I've lived that way a long, long time, fellas. I recommend it. Uh, this dude over here, JC, says, aren't there voice coaches you can hire? Yeah, look, you know what? There's ways that you can change your tonality and your voice, you know, the delivery. Having having healthy testosterone levels will naturally deepen your voice, obviously. But sure, I mean, you can do stuff like that. But... I suspect it's it's got more to do with guys like that really just hanging out in the friend zone for three days and not being direct about their intentions. The thing is, a lot of guys have been, and you know, to Alan Roger Curry's credit, so let's spend a minute on that. I met Alan twice. Good dude. Uh, very powerful guy. Highly emotional. Uh, sometimes he got bent out of shape over stuff that I personally would have, but I like the guy and I thought his uh, books were great. Mode one, I would recommend you guys read uh, when it comes to dating and making making your intentions clear to a woman that you are interested in because most guys will lollygag around. It's like, well, if I spend enough time around her or if I'm nice enough to her, or maybe I'll call her up. Like one of the things that I came across, one of the threads in the female dating strategy was some lady that told the story <laughs> about this geek that called her up at work and said, hey, I'm going to book you a massage this Thursday. You know, what time would work for you? And they're all they're all swooning over it. And it's like, yeah, those aren't the guys that gals get wet over. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, those are the guys that they take advantage of. And then when they're done with the massage, they go over to the guy's house. They get wet over, right? So the direct approach to dating, dating the way that Alan Ro Roger Curry talks about is basically make your intentions very, very clear from day one and communicate that way if that's what you want, right? Uh I think it also avoids a lot of the potential problems that guys deal with today when it comes to things like Me Too's and you know the like and stuff like that. So pay attention to stuff like that. It's a great book. Um, let's see what we got here. I can wrap up pretty soon if there's no other callers. Uh, again, the link is pinned up in the top comment if you guys got anything. If not, we's going to bounce soon. Let me see what else we got here in the comments. Uh, Fire, M-A-M-G, wife... Yeah, that whole wife school thing, right? That's just, that's just, I don't know. You know, it's a new grift. You know, it's a new grift because guys want gals that are wife material. And then these, you know, gals that have been with a bunch of dudes are all of a sudden going to lecture them and say, be agreeable, learn how to cook and don't be promiscuous. Thanks tips, you know, because nobody said that one before, right? Uh, you guys are pretty busy in the chat. Yeah, she offers guacamole and salsa. That was that was our video earlier on. What do you bring to the table? I bring guacamole and salsa. Cool, because I can't buy that at the store. Uh, sexy diplomas. Yeah, like all of these Steve Harvey type of shows that are all just you know feeding women this uh you know these 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 lies and these lyrics about well you know you got you took off all the boxes because you're really beautiful and you're hot and all that sort of stuff it's like then why are you still single 
Where's the guy? Hey, where's your mom's guy? Why isn't he sitting there? Right? Ask questions, right? Uh, how to man. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right. I think we're going to take it and wrap it up this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, hit the like button in the top comment. There'll be a pin link to some other useful stuff you might want to check out. And if you haven't gotten on my email list, it is right here below. Uh, a good use of your time in the new year. If you're fed up with lining your boss's pocket with gold, if your business is not throwing off a lot of money, chances are you're probably running what's called a hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating business. And the entire modules in my School of Entrepreneurship are built around pivoting to a easy, lucrative, and fun type of business, an alpha type of business. This is something coined by Joe Polish, by the way, who's a brilliant fucking marketer. Um, so I get into the weeds and the lectures in my teachable about everything that I've learned over the last 20, 25 years in entrepreneurship with all the guys that I dealt with and everything and how to pivot and promote yourself and build your business in such a way that it is lucrative. It's a mindset course, guys. Don't be mistaken. It's not a do A, B, C, and D, and you too will be a whatever millionaire. It's this is what the best entrepreneurs have done that have helped them build businesses that are fun and lucrative and easy to run, that they can generate money from anywhere around the world if they need to pick up and move somewhere, independent location, okay? These are the kind of businesses that I advise guys to look up, especially in the coming years. You stay in the corporate world, any of the fan companies, I know there was a guy mentioning, you know, he was making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year working in one of the fan companies in Silicon Valley. And I know a guy that makes $780,000 working for one of these places right now, but it's like, the amount of wokeness and pronouns and rainbow and inclusivity and we got to celebrate this month or that fucking month and you got to put this in your bio and put a circle around your Facebook and if you don't, they're going to lecture you about it. If you don't want to listen to all that crap and you want to write your own paycheck and deliver value because you have something to offer, then go do it, man. I mean, like this is the year to do it. It's, you know, it's going to be a new year. Um, Last super chat. I remember you having a discussion, alpha female with another girl. She was very open-minded, but they still think we care about the, the career. Very good point. Um, I think that was a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, Velco made a clip on that one, uh, my editor. And, you know, it was a typical, you know, I'm a boss girl and the guy that I was dating, he ended up going with some other girl and she was heavier and she didn't have a degree. And it's like, our, like I just finished telling you guys don't care about your degree, right? like was she heavier how much heavier was she curvy maybe he likes you know more curve i don't know i mean what do you look like you know it's a standard narrative a lot of these women are just like well i'm just successful and i'm 35 and i have all my shit together but i can't get a guy to fucking you know be with me well think about why that is ladies you're the common denominator it's funny because I think she was a physician too, if I'm not mistaken, the same one that he's talking about. I'm pretty sure she said that she was a physician. And it's like, <laughs> I said to her, I go, we need to have a long discussion about why you're getting these results. And we're going to have to flip on your camera, obviously, to get a good look at you. Book a consult. You make good money. Uh, maybe, I don't know, you know, okay, fuck off then, right? Like this is the way that that they've been conditioned to just believe I don't need to do anything. I just have to do what I've been told, which is get a degree, get a good job, wear a pretty enough outfit, put eat, pray, love in my bathroom wall or some shit like that, and 17 pillows on my fucking bed, and some guy will fall in love with me. And it's like, no, that's not what guys want. But you ladies don't want to hear what guys want. It's in one ear, out the other. I don't know. Maybe the, the wife school or something will solve that for ladies. I doubt it, though. <laughs> Oh, 